Have you ever stopped to think about how important audio is in your branding message? Today we're talking about what is audio branding and why it's important. Jody shares how she got started as a voiceover talent and why she says we should rethink our audio branding strategy. She says consistency makes you memorable. So please stick around and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because we're going to be talking about audio today. And I have Miss Jody Krangle on, and she's going to teach us how to uh, uh, how to brand your audio. So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Miss Jody Krangle. Thank welcome. You so <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to talk to you. And you know, I always like to, for people to like share a little bit about who they are, what they do. So, tell us a little about how you, who you are. And how are you dealing with this whole COVID-19 and before we really start diving into the show? Oh my goodness. How is anyone dealing with this? This is weird times. Very, very strange times. Um, I have always loved audio. So it's always been a part of my life. Singing is something I've done since I could talk. And I just, I love it. It's part of my daily life. And of course, getting into voiceover now, that's been full time since 2007, uh, I, I use, use my, my voice, voice every day. day. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I learn a ton and I start to get an idea of how companies are using my voice to brand themselves. And that kind of led to the larger question of, well, what is this audio branding thing? I'm curious. And I started asking questions and I started doing interviews and I have a podcast about it and, and I'm finding it really fascinating And not not just because because of the marketing and advertising aspect, aspect, but also because of the science and psychology aspect of it, because because it's so much a part part of our daily lives. It's It's a part part of our physical, biological makeup to respond to sound and how that influences us in general, but also how it influences our buying behaviors has become really a fascinating subject for me. Right, right. Yeah. I love it. Like I said, I, I can listen to your voice in my ear. And as you can see, Miss Joy's like, put some headphones on. So I got my headphones on and you can definitely tell the difference. So, you know, I, I love to, you know, sharing your, your tidbits and stuff like that. And really, I want to know, like, how how can businesses really learn to really harness their sound or their, their audio? Well, it's well, a it's good, good question. question. And, and I, I think, think it's, it's a small, small part of a very large question. question. So a lot of people think in terms of the visuals of their company, they are very interested in what colors they're using and the logo and the fonts they're using and what emotional responses these elicit in people, but they're not thinking about the sound of their brand. And that sound reaches people on an emotional, visceral level that is way deeper than the visual. (laughs) So really what you should be thinking of is the entire sensory picture, not just the visual. Also keep in mind that when people are listening to you, they don't have to be paying attention with their whole soul. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're able, if you're asking people to look at something, they have to take a moment away and look at that thing and concentrate on it. If they're hearing sound in the background, it can make an impression on them whether or not they're paying full attention. And it also is a universal kind of thing. So it doesn't really matter where in the world you are. So there's a lot of really good things that you can use sound for. Yeah. That people don't. It's amazing because this comes after I did a podcast challenge and um, she was telling us, you know, and I, and I remember picking it up a little bit because I listened to Deepak you know, meditation. And I'm thinking to myself, mm-hmm. I got Deepak in my ears, you know, <laughs> but I never thought of it. You know, I took a deeper dive when she says people don't have to stop and watch the video. They can take you along and listen to you as they, you know, as you said, and that touched what you're just talking about, that people don't have to stop, look and listen, you know, watch. They can actually listen to what you have to say. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's one, one of those things. things. That's, That's why podcasts, podcasts and radio shows are popular because people can do other things while they're listening. So it's not, I I think um, 
These days, especially when our attention is so sought after in so many different ways, and there are so many things vying for our attention, so much noise out there in general. I don't mean like noise audio, but just lots of things going on, things that need our attention that we have to do, like, you know, housework, taking care of kids, taking, you know, um, doing other things, um, writing an email, you know, um, uh, I don't know, anything you do online, right? right. Like, you can, but you can listen to something and do all those things at the same time. <laughs> right, right, and right. Yeah, so it just, it audio is able to find a space in our busy lives that other types of demands on our attention can't really manage. I, I love that because I, you know what, like I said, it wasn't important and it was, you know, I was kind of laughing because I was talking about the deep pockets in my ear, but it's like, you can take them along and like you say, you don't have to disrupt everything else that you're doing. Take somebody along with you in your ear. And, yeah. and, and, and I think you touched, did you talk about how sound is a way to your heart? Is that, oh, what, yeah. I think you um, mentioned something about that. I, yeah, yeah, I talk, I talk about, about that a lot. It's, it's actually, actually emotional shorthand. shorthand. So if you hear something that gets you to feel a certain emotion and music, sound gets you there in a heartbeat, it's really fast and it's really deep and it gets right to your heart. And I think if you're talking about this in the context of advertising, it makes a deeper impression and makes you able to connect with the person listening to you on a way deeper level than simply presenting a logo to them. And it, it also gets us to remember things because if you're consistent with a particular sound, people will recognize who you are based on that sound really from only hearing a couple of seconds of it. They don't need to hear the whole thing. You know, like if, if you, for instance, say the same thing at the beginning of your podcast every time or at the end of your podcast every time, people get used to it. And if they hear you beginning to say that, they'll know exactly what you're going to say and, and they'll know this is the end of the podcast or this is the beginning of the podcast or whatever, you know, it's consistency. And I talk about this a lot in the context of things like, for instance, Intel. So if you recall, Intel was at the end of every tech commercial for a really long time. So they didn't actually have their own commercials. They piggybacked on other tech commercials and said, you know, quality inside, Intel inside, that flashed on the screen with their logo. And then you heard da, 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 right? <laughs> So it's that, it's that sound coupled with the visuals that then after you'd seen that a certain amount of times, suddenly you didn't need to see the visuals anymore. All you needed to do was hear the sound and it brought you right back. So then Intel became equated with quality and with every tech thing that ever came out, <laughs> you know? Right. So it just became synonymous with that and you didn't need to see it anymore, which means if you think about it, it doesn't matter what language you speak, it, it, you know, whatever language you had was displaying before, but then if you're from uh, Singapore and you're suddenly in New York City, then the same sound elicits the same commercial and the same understanding and it doesn't matter where you are in the world. So it becomes that emotional shorthand that reaches you really quickly and really deeply and triggers memory in us. And really advertising is all about memory because if you don't remember who it is that was doing the advertising, you're not going to buy it, right? <laughs> right, right. And you know what, when you were talking about the Intel and you didn't even have to make the sun, the doo -doo -doo, it was already in my head. I exactly. knew what it was like when you brought it up. So it was yeah. amazing that- we we don't think about these kind of things when we we when we're branding and I I like this golden nugget. This is where I always like to say if you're picking up the golden nuggets that Jody is dropping, please consider hitting that like button, letting us know what you like, put a comment down below and, and share some of your knowledge. And I wanna like go deeper into like why did not people why don't people pick up on the audio a little bit more when it comes to their branding? Why do we we sort of ignore it and then we you know You know, I think that for smaller companies, maybe they think they can't afford it, first mm. of all. 
I don't don't think think that's the case. case. I think it can be very simple. Like I was saying, if you have a phrase you say at the beginning of your podcast or a particular piece of music you start with, that's audio branding. (laughs) It does not have to be expensive. You don't have to pay someone to create something for you for $15 million. That's not, it's not necessary. You can do this without spending a whole lot of money at all. It's really about What people say about you when you're not in the room, that's branding, right? Add an audio aspect to that. Who are you and how are you coming across and how does that sound? And if you think about it, it's the emotions you're trying to get people to feel when they think about you. So so think about that in the terms of what sounds get people to feel those emotions. Mm. And what do the colors you use and the logo you have and the fonts you use, what kinds of emotions do you want people to feel when they see those, follow through with it, with whatever you're using in your sound? So the music that you put behind any of your videos, uh, the on hold that you have for someone waiting on hold to reach your business. Um, So any of your phone messages, that kind of thing. Any sound design that you put, uh, for instance, I know that Netflix is a huge company, but it like they have that but um right, like you know on everything, right? Right. That that I mean, yes, they did do some research, I'm sure, to figure out what sound to use. But we're not stupid. We can figure this out. You know what I mean? Like there are, there are people who do this for a living. I know there are. Audio branding is is very big, and it's becoming bigger. And you can spend a lot of money on this. Don't don't get me wrong. And in some instances, it's well worth spending the money because these are experts in their field and they know what they're doing. And these are sounds and soundscapes and music pieces that will travel with you throughout all your company's touch points. That can be a big, big thing. And you're investing in it once and then sort of evolving it over time. And they've figured out who you are and they can get that sound packaged and working in various different forms like Alexa and Google Home as well. You know, like all of these things, they're all part and parcel of the whole package. But if you're an individual business and you just want to come up with some kind of a sound that's yours, you can experiment. There's nothing to say that you have to pay someone big bucks to do this. Especially if you can't afford it, because not a lot of us can, you know, I mean. <laughs> right, right, right. And like, but, I yeah. love how you talked about the, you brought up the um, the Alexa apps and stuff like that. And yeah, mm-hmm. if people are not understanding that your brand is big in audio, you just check out what they're doing with the Alexas and the Googles and stuff like that. Because now you can have everything just on voice, voice activated, and then you, it's right there in your ear. And, and it's amazing. So, yeah. Miss Jody, I know we're we're close on time, so I really want to touch on what's the real thing, the run key message that you want the audience to take away from your your um from your message today. That audio is important. That it's something to think about along with the rest of your branding, and that it will make a huge impact if you use it effectively. You know, it's it's a having a full sensory experience for your brand makes it more authentic to the people you're reaching. And authenticity is, oh my God, so important these days because people's BSO meters are so high right now, <laughs> like <laughs> off the charts, right? So if you can reach your potential clients and customers on a deep, visceral, emotional, and authentic way, why not? Right, right. So invest in your audio as well as your video, as mm-hmm. what she's saying. Yes. So Ms. Jody, where can people find more information about you, your services, and what you do? Well, my voiceover website is at voiceoversandvocals.com. And my podcast on audio branding, where I interview a bunch of people about this stuff, (laughs) uh, mostly about how sound influences us, which I just find fascinating in general. Uh, That's at audiobrandingpodcast.com. And I do have a download for people to have a look at five intentional audio branding strategies, if it's okay to mention that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. It's uh, voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. 
and it does put you on a mailing list. It's a download for, for that. But at the same time, it's just a weekly newsletter that lets you know when the new podcasts come out. There's nothing, you know, huge about it. <laughs> right, um, right. I'm not trying to sell anything, you know, unless you want voiceovers, then you call me. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Um, but if someone really doesn't want to be on a mailing list, they can just email me from the website and I'll send them the PDF. I totally get that some people just don't want to be on mailing lists at all. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thank you for sharing your, your wealth of knowledge. And like I said, I, I know there was a ton of nuggets that people, and I would love to invite you to come back and go deeper into a, some more um, audio stuff that people, you know, you gave me some tidbits of, of just mm -hmm. in the 30 minutes that we talked about. So <laughs> I would love to have you come back on as a guest. I'd be happy to. This has been fun. <laughs> well, thank you. And again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Remember, feedback is always welcome. Emails if you have any guests or show ideas. Links to all of the uh, sites that Jody mentioned will be posted in the comments. So make sure you check out those descriptions down below. And if you enjoyed watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. So bye-bye for now. Hi everyone, this is Tanya again, popping in to say thank you for listening to today's show. Coffee with Tea interviews are always free, and if you're enjoying the wisdom and insights that are being shared, please stay and grow with us and show your financial support. You can buy us coffee or become a monthly supporter. Links are posted in the description box. And again, I wanted to personally say thank you for tuning in.